equipment used. Safety restraints in an elevated surface are optional. Electric clippers and clipper lubricant, a three-quarter inch blade or blade attachment comb, and a metal tooth comb. Equipment required. Go to EdenDog.com for a list of recommendations. I'll post a link in the description below. In this method of grooming, we are going to be cutting with the natural growth pattern of the hair. Okay, so we've got our puppy. She's been bathed and fully dried. Thank you. And um, <laughs> she's never had a haircut before, so this will be her first haircut. <laughs> All right. This will be her first haircut, so uh, we have her um, on a grooming table with this little thing. Or you can you do what I did when I first started out with dogs, um, do the poor thing, and uh, put a leash right around their neck and hook the leash to a doorknob and, uh, and sit on the floor and groom your dog. There's no shame in that, right? I did that for years. So. Using positive association training techniques, Prime your puppy to accept the clippers. Um, for her, since this is her first groom, we're going to have a lot of treats available. I have this little silicone pouch here and I've got fresh pet in it. So, um, see if that's uh, any good for her. So, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to brush the dog out completely. So, I already did that. Um, make sure we remove any loose coat, um, any, any, uh, Undercoat that needs to come out. We should get a little bit of hair, not a lot, because they are a low shedding breed. But we will see some hair, uh, maybe just a tiny bit. And then we're going to move on to her haircut. So we have our oiled clippers ready to go on three and a quarter, three quarter inch height. This is 19 millimeters, and we're just going to uh, get her clipped. So one of the first things I'm going to do is really let her listen to it. What is that? She's heard these before, and if your puppy came from me, they've heard them before. And they've felt the vibrations. I'm gonna let her feel the vibration. It's a little bit weird, right? If your puppy seems fearful, feed something high value while gently touching and withdrawing the clippers. part desensitization and part positive association. We have some bacon. She's really interested in the bacon. Stay up here. It's okay, right? Bacon's delicious. That was a big piece, huh? <laughs> so hopefully this tiny bit of exposure will help the experience be not quite as terrifying for her as if we just tied her up and started cutting her hair. If we do our part properly, we will see reactions like we'll see in this next clip later on in the groom when we get near sensitive spots. It will look, snip, and relax. needs to learn where the edges of the table are and that she can fall off the table and that it would be unpleasant. This is a very good example of how to actually teach the puppies to be safer up here um, and another reason why you should never ever 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 leave a dog or a puppy unattended on a grooming table or an elevated surface with a noose, a grooming loop or anything around their neck. These dogs can and will sometimes attempt to jump off the table. They will slip and fall off the table. They do all kinds of crazy things. Some of my most experienced dogs have forgotten that the loop was on them and tried to jump off the table. And when you're right there, it's very not traumatizing other than it's traumatizing for you, but the dogs are okay and everybody's happy. Um, but it's good to teach them a little bit that if they, uh, 
if they fall, you know, it's not going to be pleasant. So if you do see them do it, they'll do it on their own. And you'll see them walking this way and then, oops, I've fallen down. Just be very calm, lift them back up, let them learn from the experience that if I walk too far, I'm going to fall. Um, but don't panic and freak out because then you might scare them. Seriously? <laughs> then you might scare them into being fearful of the table. And we don't want them to be afraid of the table. We want them to enjoy being up on the table with us because it's where they're getting lots of attention and love, right? Right? But never, ever, ever walk away. If you have to walk away, take the dog down. If you have to go to the bathroom, take the dog down. If you have to walk into the kitchen to answer your cell phone, take the dog down. It is not worth it. It does not take very long for a dog to strangle um, or really damage their, their throat. It's just not worth it. I've never had to happen, but I've heard all kinds of horror stories about um, facial injuries, throat injuries, eye injuries, even from pressure from strangling, just not fun and, uh, and don't do it. Just a little bit of, it's sort of like having a baby in the bathtub. You would just never, ever, ever turn your back on a baby in a bathtub and you never turn your back on your baby on a grooming table, right? Ever, we don't do that. You just love me, don't you? <laughs> All right. Never walk away. Never train a dog to jump off of the table at the end of a grooming session. It is just a bad idea. Dog should walk off of a table if it is adjustable in height, only when guided by a leash, or should be gently lifted and removed from the table. Dog should never be permitted to jump off a grooming table. Down the back. And down the side, like the way the ribs are. And we don't do the legs just yet, just go down here. very not interesting at all. There's nothing interesting about it. So you can see that's our first cut in and uh, it's not exactly even um, and that's it's normal for that. We've got so many curls here and cowlicks and spirals that you're just not going to get a good normal cut the very first time you, you cut. So you're going to take your comb and just brush the hair up against the grain. Your puppy also probably has some loose skin, normal puppy skin, and some adults still have kind of loose doggy skin too. So make sure that you kind of stretch it out and you don't catch any rolls, any puppy fat rolls or anything like that. And uh, Sorry, honey. And then go up like this, and then do it again. The sound goes out at the parts where I speed up the video, just sort of helps everything move along a little quicker. This is sort of about gaining their voluntary cooperation rather than them feeling like they have no power or control in the situation at all. Just a positive experience um, of being handled and getting attention from someone that they care about. And uh, that's how she should feel, that it's not necessarily negative. 
Um, and after every time you do a little bit for a little while, you should uh, stop and give her a treat. And some bacon. You'll notice I often use my hand to back brush and stand the hair up for cutting. So you can keep doing, you can do this and cut until you feel like it's pretty even. Um, you can see it's a little uneven here. And I haven't done the rest of her, of course. I usually finish a haircut in three passes. So now I'm gonna do the rest of her and, uh, and then we'll talk all after the trunk is finished. Girl. With your first puppy groom, if you get most of the puppy's hair cut, you're winning. <laughs> um, you can consider it a win. Okay, so this is intended to be your puppy's very first real haircut with a pair of clippers. So rather than focus on the tips and the tricks to get a perfect groom, Rather than worrying about polishing your groom overall, I want your main concern to be just getting through the groom. Because when you bring your dog up on your table or your countertop or whatever you're using, you're going to find that your dog squirms and moves a lot and all of that stuff. So just, um, just focus on getting through the groom, cutting most of the coat and trying not to uh, get frustrated in the process. This is new. Your puppy, uh, he's gonna respond to this haircut sort of like you're dragging a toy over his body. He's gonna wanna turn around and kind of bite and chew on things. He has to learn to stand still and be bored <laughs> without, um, you know, going puppy crazy. So remember that this is uh, new for him, new experience for you as well, and take your time. And uh, one of the greatest things that you can do for you and your puppy is to actually make this first haircut a three to five day process. So what I mean is you're going to bathe your puppy, dry your puppy, and begin the haircut. And every single day you're going to do exactly that. Bathe the puppy, dry the puppy, and cut hair. But each day you're only going to cut between one and one and a half hours worth of hair. Whatever you get done, you get done. This sort of helps because it breaks the groom up and your first groom is going to take you somewhere between two and four hours to complete. Um, so this breaks the groom up into sizable chunks, you know, an hour and a half of bathing, blow drying, and cutting instead of three or four. And um, it also gets your puppy really used to it all in one stretch. If he does this, takes a bath, takes a blow dry, and gets a little bit of a haircut every day for three to five days, he's going to be a pro. And by the time you go and you clip your dog's haircut, the, the second haircut, you're actually going to have a really easy time. And you're going to see that I will groom a second haircut on this puppy in um, you know, probably about six weeks, and I'll post that video. And you're going to see a big difference in her demeanor. Watch the video. Pay attention to how much I wrestle with Ginger, because I do. I'm constantly lifting her tushy back up, constantly standing her up, constantly turning her face because she turns her head, which wrinkles her skin and causes those uneven bumps that you see, and um, essentially just attempts to bite the clippers, lick my face, kiss me half to death, I think, um, which she still does, and um, just wrestle. It's puppy wrestling way more than it is hair cutting. So give yourself a break. Try to enjoy it and try to gain the puppy's cooperation rather than just tie the puppy up as tight as possible and get it done. Just, you know, try to enjoy it because that's really what it all is about anyway.
stand up your puppy on her back legs to get the tummy trim. Puppies, you just raise them up. See what I'm doing. I'm going over Ginger's haircut a bunch of times, mostly just because I'm being super picky and wanting to give you a lot of footage to really watch how I do it. You will probably finish your haircut in three passes. The rough cut, back brush with a comb or your hand, cut, and then back brush with your comb or a hand, and do it again, and you'll pretty much be done. Clip easy to mat areas against the natural hair growth. It helps the hair remain tangle free in those tough spots. Can you see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I'm worried you don't like it. Rough clip it, back brush it, clip it again, and repeat until you're satisfied with the results. And the more you get to know the curves of their body, the easier it becomes. When they get tired, give them treats. Lots of breaks, lots of treats. Hey, you giving up on me, huh? Sometimes the blade doesn't line up with this little black thing and you have to like move it because when it's on, that black thing goes back and forth, back and forth, see that? And so if it doesn't line up with the hole in here, then it won't go on. It's really annoying, it happens sometimes. It's really annoying. So when you snap it on, it won't snap on. Why? It's because this little thing isn't lining up and it's being finicky. It's annoying. Always check the temperature of your blade. If it's getting hot, take it off, let it cool down. Stick it in the freezer. Um, I have two blades. So I switch out when they get hot. Always lubricate your blade. Always, always. Lubricating it keeps it sharp and it also keeps it from getting hot. You do not want hot blades. And if you wipe it down um, or just use a few drops of oil, you will not get an oily coat as a result of oiling it. Sometimes you see these lines, and if they stay, these lines stay, again, that's a time when you want to just 
pull the hair up like that and go over where the line is. So if you see that line, and then if you still see it, you just do that. Little tip, if you are allergic to dogs or the hair bothers you, um, my dogs, these dogs don't usually bother my allergies because they are non-shedding dogs, but when I groom them, it uh, really bothers my allergies. So I will take a paper towel, wet it down, squeeze it out, and periodically during the groom, I just wipe my face with it, like that, and it just picks up those little tiny hairs that are flying in my face and going up my nose and making me miserable. I get my eyes and my nose and my face and I'll do that periodically. When I'm grooming a black dog, you'll actually see the hairs, the tiny, tiny, almost like dust. I'm not actually explaining anything at this point. I didn't turn it on, did you see that? I was like, yeah. I'm just I'm combing the dog with my hair color. <laughs> Good job, puppy. <laughs> Let's check the blade and make sure it's not too hot. <laughs> what do you think? Is it pretty good so far? <laughs>